life, they marry, and senior also to go to church. They become bewildered than me. I think that for this he has sent me. And I'm receiving good response. So many senior, not Vishakul Sopsila Bhakti Vedal Swami Maharaj, coming. And I'm healthy. I'm very happy to help them. I see, I'm very happy that, oh, there are so many seniors. Huh? This, uh, <coughs> disciples of Swami Jiyaji. And so do you, the new <coughs> devotees who are coming to me also, I think they are, read, they are reading the books of Swami. By inspiration, they are all coming to me. Yeah. This is yeah. the of Swami. Yeah. In my tour, up till now, in Western countries, I have given discourses on Krishna Lila and stages of bhakti. And that, in that stage, the gradation of thoughts. This is the past tense, from first country to tenth especially we have done. Eleventh canto we have also done. In, uh, Asia, uh, Asia. Yes. Now I have one. That you should see, we are some glory of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Without this, you cannot understand Sri Mahaprabhu. If you know the same past times of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, why he came and what he did, then you will actually then understand Sri Mahaprabhu. Who was Krishna, who was Radha, what is Vrindavan and Pada? So Krishna Lila is like a very thick loose uh, contact milk. And if Karpur and sugar, Kantar and sugar is given to me, or it makes taste so hard. So Krishna Lila is like sweet, condensed milk, and Chaitanya Lila is like camphor and sugar. Krishna Dasa Vigar has spoken. So we will <coughs> try to give our classes. Why Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came? He reached us. Then, how he took birth? The past times of Nityananda Prabhu, the past times of our thoughts. Radhamananda Sampad, Sanatam Siksha, Rup Siksha. All things we will try as much as we can do. And if not completed something, then we can continue in pleasure. Ah, morning classes also they can do it. So first to know Krishna and especially Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. We cannot know ourselves. By reading also you cannot know. Because Jaha Bhagavad Pada, question of it. They have walk and eat. Walk is there, nectar is there, but it is walk and eat. So, question of it. Tell the feet. Names of all these things. So, without Guru, anyone cannot go towards Krishna or Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. 
गुरु भक्ति एंड ऑफ भक्ति ऑलवेज रिमेम्बर दो टू हैव तर्क गुरु लाइक रूप गोस्वामी हैव टोल विश्व प्रेरण गुरु सेवा लाइक प्राण बल हो वह प्राण बल हो वेरी क्लोज फ्रेंड एंड साथ ही सो विदाउट इज मशी यू कैन नो ऑल दीज पर्स सो फर्स्ट वी वॉन्ट टू डिस्कस अबाउट गुरु तत्व वॉट इज गुरु तत्व फॉर वट इज दी वट इज ऑफ ए मोना पाइल गुरु Also, we should know who is qualified to be a disciple. Their quality also, and then in what condition a guru can be given up? In what condition? And if not, he is giving up any fallen guru. Then what will be result today? We will discuss about this. And then Mr. Ananda Prabhu said, "First, you should send the money." Bhagavan 
Well, it is based upon our Guru Mishnah. Just like we are all able to sit here today uh, because our back can be kept straight by our backbone, our spine. If we did not have a strong backbone, how we could sit? So in the same way, Srila Gurudev always tells us, Guru Nishta, that means firm, firm, absolute faith in Guru, is the very backbone of Bhakti. So, this principle is always discussed in the beginning, because Bhagavan, he cannot be approached without the mercy and the shelter of Sri Guru. In the prayers of Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakwa that we have all learned, he is telling there, Yasya Prasada Bhagavat Prasada. Yasya Prasada Nagati Gupodi. That means that by the mercy, by the prasad of Sri Guru, then one gets the mercy of Krishna. And Yasya Prasada Na, if one doesn't have this mercy, then Katikutoki, he can never attain the goal of life. Not possible. So therefore, uh, the instruction to us, Yayam, Stuvam, Stasya, Yashas, Trisantyam, Vande Guru, Sri Charanaravinda. I meditate three times daily. I glorify my Sri Guru Dev three times daily. What does three times mean? It means that we should not forget him at any time. It means that we should be absorbed in understanding our total, absolute dependence upon his mercy. But without him we are nothing. Huh? And without his grace and mercy, we have no possibility of attaining this highest goal of perfection to realize and attain eternal transcendental love for Krishna. So if someone is so fortunate in this human form of life, that after wandering through millions of species of life, finally attaining the human form of life, he has the opportunity to have sadhu sangha, association with saintly Vaishnavas, who are pure devotees of the Supreme Lord. And in that association, he gains some faith by hearing from them the transcendental topics of the Supreme Lord. Then the next step is that he will accept initiation. And accepting initiation from Sri Guru, now he will go on uh, hearing from Sri Guru all transcendental topics, and he will cultivate the practices of bhakti under the direction of Sri Guru. Uh, this is called Anugatya. And what kind of service will he render to Sri Guru? As Sri Guru they have told, Vishram Bhena Guru or Seva. He will serve Guru with transcendental Vishrambha Bhav. That means very uh, feeling that Sri Guru Dev is nearest and dearest to me. He is my very dear most friend of my heart. Huh? So that kind of mood of love and devotion for Guru, it is the very principle by which we can attain perfection. We also hear and understand uh, the glories of Guru from many of the songs of our great Acharyas like Srila Narottam Das Thakur. Uh, and therefore, there he is telling us, Shri Guru Chadane Rati, Ei Sei Uttama Gati, Ye Prasade Kude Sarva Asha. If someone can be so fortunate to develop Rati, transcendental love and affection for the lotus feet of Guru, Shri Guru Chadane Rati, then Ei Sei Uttama Gati. Oh, that very attachment, it is the ultimate perfection of his life and it will bring him to the supreme perfection in which Jai Prasade Pude Sarva Asha. He will receive the mercy of Guru and all of his desires of his eternal soul to have love for Krishna will be completely fulfilled. That is the power of relationship with Sri Guru. So Guru is not a personality of this material world who has come to this world like ordinary conditioned souls that he has anything to do with the enjoying tendencies, like the conditioned souls are madly racing here and there, 
try to get the objects of the senses, to gratify their senses in this world, and ending continuously in a cycle of frustration and endless, endless suffering. No, Sri Guru is not like that. He is a divine personality who is within this world as Sakshad Haritvena, non-different than the Supreme Lord as a manifestation of the Lord to give mercy to the conditioned souls in this world. Therefore, you will not see the ordinary qualities of the conditioned souls within Sri Guru. Sri Shastra is telling, uh, Samastha Shastra, all the different Vedic literatures are telling us the qualities of Sri Guru in one Vedic mantra in order to identify who is actually qualified to be Guru. And if you meet such a Guru, how will you be able to see what kind of symptoms will you see in Guru? So there it is telling. Sadvigya uh, Nargam, Sadeva Guru, Sadguru Evam Abhilachchit, Samitpani Shrutriyam Brahma Nishtam. So here it is saying that uh, if someone wants to understand this divine transcendental knowledge, Vidyanarakam, then it is absolutely compulsory. A Vigaschet means it is compulsory. It is not you may accept, you may not. No. If you want to know the absolute truth, it is absolutely compulsory. You will have to approach Satguru and Satguru Eva Abhigachet. And that approach to Sri Guru, it must be made with great submission. Submit Pani. Uh, in, in a symbolic language, it is telling in the Vedas that you are carrying with you, when you come to Guru, you are carrying the firewood that is required to perform yogya, like the fire yogyas in the Vedic times. So Sri Guru, what does that mean? That means that you are bringing your very life in your hands and offering it at the feet of Guru and allowing him to sacrifice you in the fire of pure devotion to Sri Krishna. So there it is telling Samit Pani and then it tells the qualities, two qualities mentioned here, Shrotriyam and Brahma Nishtam. Shrotriyam means that Sri Guru, he himself has become thoroughly completely well acquainted with the ocean of transcendental realized knowledge, Vidya Gyan, of the Absolute Truth, Bhagavan Sri Krishna. Shrotriyam, he himself has heard this divine knowledge from his preceptor, from his guru, and he has realized this deeply within his heart. Now he is qualified to transmit that knowledge to the conditioned souls and open up their darkened eyes. And then, Shrotriyam uh, Brahma Nishtam. Brahma Nishtam. What is Brahma? Brahma means the supreme absolute truth from which everything has come. Janma Yataha. This entire creation of this material worlds, the creation, the maintenance, and the final dissolution of these three worlds has come from the absolute truth, Brahma, sometimes called Parabrahma. That part of Brahma is none other than the Supreme Absolute Personality of Godhead, Bhagavan Sri Krishna. So Brahma Nishtam means he is absolutely, Sri Guru is absolutely fixed in that Supreme Brahma. He can never be deviated for one single moment from his divine realization of that Supreme Brahma. So in the Srimad Bhagavatam, it is also telling Tasmat Guru Prabhupada Jitya Sur Shreya Uttama Shakti Pareksha Vishnatam Brahmani Pushamashrayam. Here Srimad Bhagavatam, 11th canto, is also telling us that Tasmat Guru Prabhupada Jitya Sur Shreya Uttama. If you want to inquire about what is the ultimate Shreya, Shreya Uttama means the topmost benefit of our soul. If you want to inquire about that, then you must approach Guru. And you must do what? Prapadhyeta. You must surrender at the feet of Guru and ex 
accept him as your master and submissively hear from him. As Sri Krishna also tells in Bhagavad Gita, he says, if you want to know this transcendental knowledge, he says, then you have to do three things. You have to go to a tattvadarshi, a personality who sees the absolute truth himself. He can see, he can has divine vision. Uh, so you must go to him and do pranipat. You must surrender at his feet, submissively, uh, and give up your false ego that I know anything. I'm a very important person in this world. No. Before Sri Guru, we are nothing but a conditioned soul floating on the waves of this endless ocean of material existence. So, uh, Pranipatina and then Paniprashnena. Then you must inquire submissively. You must hear the transcendental nectar that is coming from the lotus mouth of Sri Guru. And third thing, Sevaya, you have to serve. You have to develop the mood of service to Sri Guru because he is introducing you to the mood of service of the Supreme Absolute Truth, Sri Krishna. So that Sri Guru, he must have these qualities as mentioned in Srimad Bhagavatam because if he is, does not possess these qualities, oh, then you can easily get cheated. There are so many persons, especially in this Kali Yuga, who are very happily waiting to pray upon innocent souls and to tell them, yes, yes, come to me and I will give you divine knowledge, divine realization, but simply they are looking to get money, to get followers and to cheat the innocent public. To find Sri Guru in this world who has these divine qualities and realization is extremely rare. So therefore, Shiva Bhagavatam is telling, Tasma Guru Prapadyeka Jikyasu Shreya Uttama Shabde Parecha Nishnatam Brahmani Upashama Shreya. Here again, it is telling, Shabde Parecha Nishnatam Brahmani. The absolute truth, part of Brahma, that Sri Guru has realized this Shabda Brahma, the divine transcendental sound. And he has also realized Parabrahma, the Supreme Lord Himself. And Vishnatam uh, Brahmani Upasamasrayam. That means he is fully detached from anything within this material world. He is absolutely renounced and has no interest whatsoever for trying to enjoy within this material world. Why? Because he has internal, transcendental divine love for the Supreme Lord, and he is tasting nectar of devotion, of divine love at every single step, every single moment of his existence. So such a personality who comes within this world, he is the representative directly of Krishna. And to understand this Guru Tattva, we will hear so many verses, so many shlokas quoted tonight from Shastra. What is the actual identity of Guru? How Guru is none other than a divine manifestation of Sri Krishna himself. So if we are so fortunate in our life to get the association of such a personality as we have on this glorious evening in this wonderful festival, to have this opportunity to hear from the lips of such a pure Guru, a genuine bona fide Guru in the disciple of succession, coming down for thousands of years from Sri Krishna and Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself. This is our greatest good fortune. We take this opportunity on this evening to bow down with all the uh, humility at our command at the lotus feet of our beloved preceptor, His Divine Grace Srila Bhaktivedanta Narayan Goswami
First I offer my unlimited obeisances in the dust of the lotus feet of my most worshipable Vishnu Purade. Nijalila Pravishta Om Vishnu Pad Asto Buddha Sita Sri Srimad Shila Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada and the same unlimited obeisances in the dust of the lotus feet of my most worshipable Shikshi Gurudev. Om Vishnu Pad Asto Buddha Sita Sri Srimad Shila Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Gosami Maharaj to all of our disciple of succession and all the assembled devotees. Srila Gurudev has ordered me to speak some words on the principle of Sri Guru Tattva. He has explained previously that the subject matter of Guru Tattva is the essence of all bhakti literature. It's a very heavy topic, he says, and therefore one should hear it from the core of his heart. There are many verses all over the scriptures that are glorifying Guru Tattva. One was quoted many, many times by Srila Gurudev and our Srila Prabhupada. The Gurudev talked about it for his whole festival once in Mawilamba. And he said, we are beginning this uh, preaching tour here in Mawilamba by the topic of Guru Tattva. So today is Guru Day, and he's making that day today as well. He began by saying the verse from the 11th canto, Srimad Bhagavatam. Guru Tattva is glorified by our Guru Parampara, and also the personalities who are manifestations of Akanda Guru Tattva, the principle of undivided Guru, they are also coming in our Guru Parampara. So this verse was stated by Narada to Vasudeva, the father of Sri Krishna, and then later on by Sri Sukadeva Goswami to Parikit Maharaj. By Yam Dvitiya Vinibeshitasya Ishadape Kasya Viparjayosmiti Tamayaya Tam Buddha-bhajaitam bhaktyaitrajaitam guru devatatma The cause of all fear is due to turning away from Sri Krishna, who is the undivided, complete, absolute truth, Advaita Gyan Paratattva. There's no existence outside of him. So to forget that and turn away from him, and thus to identify with this body and mind is the cause of all fear. In that fearful condition, we are running after the shadow that is behind us. That shadow is called maya. Maya means that which is not, or forgetfulness of Krishna. Material happiness, emotional, mental happiness are all products of maya. Everything we feel, everything we think in this world are all products of maya. So turning to that shadow and looking for peace and happiness, we become frustrated in living in the two jails of the body and mind. If one goes forward, on the other hand, which we have forgotten, that path, that forward path, but if we go forward on that path of Krishna Bhakti and go towards Krishna, then all material facilities, all happiness, all peace, economic development, uh, liberation, religiosity, sense gratification, everything follows just as a shadow follows a person. And how is that possible? If one engages in the service of the Lord under the guidance of Sri Guru, who is our life and soul, and a manifestation of Krishna himself, who is non-different from our Atma. After Srila Gurudev gave his class, the next morning I said to him, Gurudev, you were saying in your class last night that Sri Guru is more close to us than our own Atma. 
But I don't see you like that. Whenever I see you, I feel guilty that I'm not serving properly. So he said, yes, that is why I gave the class. So you know that there's no separation between us at any time. The gopis felt separation from Krishna, though there was no separation. And that's how it is with guru and disciple. He also explained that the disciple should think that he and guru are so inseparable, just like water and its wetness, or fire and its heat, that much. It's stated in Shastra, Yasha Deve Tata Bhaktiya, Yatha Deve Tata Guru, Das Yaite Kajita Yartha Prakashante Mahatmana. Anyone who has complete faith in Krishna Bhakti and the same faith in Sri Guru, to him all the uh, knowledge of all the revealed scriptures, the Vedas, Upanishads, Srimad Bhagavatam, everything is revealed in his heart. So what is Padabhakti? Vishadeve Padabhakti. Padabhakti is the same as Anyabhilatika Sunyam, that is uninterrupted service to the Supreme Lord with our mind, body, words, and all the sentiments of the heart that is not covered by mental speculation or the desire to enjoy the fruits of our activities, even the desire to enjoy the fruits of our service. And that service is Anupulyena Krishna Anusilanam. So Krishna Anusilanam. Bhakti means that Krishna Anusilanam, always engaging in activities meant for the pleasure of Krishna. But who is Krishna? Krishna has two aspects. One is Vishaya Krishna and one is Ashraya Krishna. Vishaya Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead as the Supreme Enjoy or the object of service. That same Bhagavan manifests as the reservoir of service to himself, and that is Sri Guru. So Parabhakti actually means first service to Guru, and only by that service will Krishna show his mercy. Krishna's mercy follows the mercy of Guru. Yasha Prashada, Bhagavad Prashada, Yasha Prashada, Nagatir Kutopi. If one pleases Guru, then Krishna is fully pleased and a magic is performed. So we've forgotten Krishna since the beginning of time. Guru performs magic and Krishna's mercy follows that. Just like magic, one becomes free for that maya and he becomes aware of his eternal spiritual body which is made of Sat, Chit, and Ananda just like the Lord. Just as in the story of Upamanyu, the Guru blessed Upamanyu because he followed his Guru's instructions, he had faith in his Guru, that all knowledge was revealed in his heart. Similarly, Aruni, who was ordered by his Guru to stop a flood that was coming to his Guru's agricultural fields, and he couldn't find any way to stop that. It was pouring, pouring rain in a dark, cold night. So he himself became like the dam, and he practically died frozen by becoming that dam. But the next morning, his Guru Dev found him and blessed him with all revealed knowledge. Similarly, Gop Kumar was giving knowledge of all tattvas to his disciple, Jana Sharma. And Jana Sharma was hearing, and he had faith but no realization. So being pleased by his disciple's faith and his hearing, and his desire to serve and surrender everything and give up his own independence, his Gurudev simply touched him on the head. Then he closed his eyes and opened his eyes, and when he opened his eyes, he saw Krishna Loka before him, and Krishna was coming home from taking care of the cows, and Krishna ran to him and embraced him, and they both fell faint on the ground. So this is the magic mercy of Sri Guru. It's also stated 
in the scriptures. Nayam, Nayam, I look for the chain and look back. Namay Naya, Nashitena, Nabahu Nena, Lohunashitena. Even if one is very, very intelligent, if he's a great master in speaking, if he can give great lectures, if he's hearing so many things, still the Lord is not bound to reveal himself to him. The Lord reveals himself only to one who he chooses. And who does he choose? One who is very dear to him, who is serving that person who is very, very dear to him. And who is dear to him? Srila Gurudev gave a very beautiful example. Krishna, as you know, prays to Srimati Radhika that I am feeling so much separation from you. Please put your lotus feet on my head. Be pleased with me so that I can be free from the burning fire of separation. And Krishna says that same verse, Smaragala Tandanam Mamashirishi Manganam Devi Parapalavam Udaram. Please place your lotus feet on my head. So Srila Gurudev explained, and this is also discussed in his Gita Govinda purports, that Krishna also says this very same thing to the dear maidservants of Srimati Radhika. Why? Because Radharani is always feeling separation from Krishna. And Krishna is always feeling separation from Srimati Radhika. So that personality who will bring them together and meet and make them feel their only and highest happiness, one who serves and surrenders to that person who is so dear to them, who brings them together, Krishna chooses to reveal himself to that devotee. Srila Gurudev also requested us to speak something about Nityananda Prabhu in relation to Guru Tattva. We see in our songbook the prayer to Lord Nityananda. Sankarsana Karuna Toy Shai Garbo Dushai Chapayo Dushai Shesha Shriya Shamsha Palajanitya that is, Sankarshan, Shesha, who keeps all the universes on his hoods, floating on his hoods just like mustard seed. They're so light, he's not even aware of his presence. So that's Sankarshan, who's a portion of a portion of a plenary portion of Nityananda. He is the source of innumerable incarnations, including Karanadakshaya Karana Vishnu, Ma Vishnu, who breathes in and out innumerable universes, Gargadakshaya Vishnu, from whose navel lake a lotus flower comes, and Lord Brahma is born, and from that lotus stem come all the planets, and Kiradakshaya Vishnu, who is lying in the ocean of milk and who is the super soul in the heart of every living entity and who is sustaining all atoms. These are just very small portions of Nityananda Prabhu. Why does he expand in this way? Because he is Balaram, the first expansion and non-different body in Sri Krishna. Only their form is a little different and the color is a little different, mood is a little different. I am the servant of Krishna, though he's none other than Krishna. So, he is the chief assistant, just as um, Krishna is now Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, so Balaram has come as Nityananda Prabhu, the source of innumerable incarnations, the source of innumerable universes the source of all jivas, Mahasankarshan, the plenary portion of Lord Nityananda, is the reservoir of all jivas. So why does he expand like that? Because he's the chief assistant in all the pastimes of Krishna. He wants to expand the pastimes of Krishna, to expand the pleasure of Krishna. 
And therefore, he does that in the spiritual world, in Goloka Vrindavan, in all the Vaikuntha planets, in Madra, in Dwarka, in Navadvipdam, in Svetadvipdam, and also in order to manifest the expansion of the Lord's pastimes, he manifests all the jivas, and then he manifests as Mahavishnu, so that the jivas can come out into this material world and get trained by Nityananda Prabhu's another glorious expansion, that is Sri Guru, who's training the living entities. Just as an expert gardener, just as an expert gardener can see any seed and tell what that plant is, Sri Guru can look at not only the disciples, but every living entity and see exactly what service they have in the spiritual world, what they look like, what they dress like. And Sri Guru gives that seed of bhakti to expand the service. Somebody asked him at the airport, we hear that only Guru can give the seed of bhakti, but bhakti is already as a seed in the heart. So Guru they said, the seed is in the heart, but Guru gives the water and the air and the sunlight to nourish that seed of bhakti so that spirit soul can become a servant of Sri Sri Radha and Krishna. This is Guru Tattva, who Krishna himself falls down at the feet of and begs for the dust of their feet. So, Srila Gurudev has ordered us to speak on this most important subject of Guru Tattva. I was just looking here in the verse book, and we see that in the 64 limbs of devotional service that Srila Rupa Goswami has um, laid down, that the first five, first Guru Parashaya, taking shelter at lotus feet of Gurudev. Second, accepting Diksha from um, Sri Guru. Third, following um, the instructions of Guru Dev with faith. Fourth, accepting Shiksha from Guru. And fifth, following um, in the line of the previous Acharyas, and especially following the instructions of one's Guru Dev. So these first five um, Andhas, limbs of Bhakti, they're dealing specifically with Guru Tattva. Because, as has been mentioned before, this Guru Tattva, this is the backbone of Bhakti. This is the foundation. That no Guru Bhakti, then there's no chance of Krishna Bhakti or Bhakti to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. The verse has been quoted. Yasya Devi Pra Bhakti, Yatha Devi Tata Guru, Prakashante Mahatma. 
that one who has this um, faith towards Guru and Krishna, um, that is Parapakti, and all um, truths of the Vedas they reveal. So there's um, Guru Bhakti and Krishna Bhakti, Gaur Bhakti. But initially, more important is Guru Bhakti. Because without Guru Bhakti, then there's no question of worshipping Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and also Sri Sri Radha and Krishna in a true sense. So, it's stated in Chaitanya Charitamrita in the first um, chapter, Adnila, Guru Krishna, Rupa Hana, Shatrira Praman, Guru Rupa Krishna Kripa, Kore Bhaktagana. That Guru Krishna, Rupa Hana, that the living entity has been traveling from many, many universes for millions and millions of lives. Brahmandi, Brahmi, Tekon, Bhagavanji, Guru Krishna, Prasadi, Bhakti, Lakati. But then when Krishna, he wants to manifest his mercy, then how he manifests his mercy to that Bhagavanji, that living entity who is approved, um, Bhakti Sukriti, Guru Krishna, um, Rupahana, that Krishna, he manifests in the form of Guru. The verse has been quoted, Shakshat Hari Venasa Masa Shastriya. That um, the scriptures that they state that Guru is Shaksha Hari is not different from Hari because he is carrying that mercy, that compassion of Hari. So here, Guru Krishna Rupahana Shastri Akaman, Guru Rupa Krishna Kripa Pure Bhaktagana. That when Krishna he comes to give mercy to the living entities, then he comes and he manifests in the form of Guru Dev. That Guru Dev, that he is full of compassion. Krishna, he is Karuna Sindhu. And that aspect of his compassionate nature, that is personified and that is embodied in Sri Guru. That every aspect, every limb, every atom of Guru Dev uh, is just oozing with compassion for the living entities. So, it is of utmost importance that one approach Guru and offer oneself wholeheartedly without reservation. But it should be Sri Guru. So the verse has been quoted. That Tasmat Guru Papadita, that we should surrender, but not just with body, not just with mind, uh, but we should, we should surrender our heart. Because in this material world, We've been traversing through so many universes. We've gone through so many species of lives, 8,400,000 species of lives. And in our different relationships in this material world, we've been cheated, we've been whipped, uh, we've been robbed. All inauspicious things have happened in our relationships in this material world. And when the living entity has been beat on the anvil of this material world, then it brings a curiosity. What is that curiosity? How can I get out of this situation? And that person who is fortunate, who is Bhagavan, then Krishna, he manifests as Sri Guru. But how to receive mercy of Guru? So he has Tatma Guru Pupadita, give you Sushre Uttamam. Uh, that if we want this Uttamam, when we want to start inquiring about things beyond the bodily necessities of life, about our ultimate welfare, <coughs> then we approach such Guru. And what is his quality? Shabde Pare Chanishnatam. Uh, the Shabde Cha uh, and Pare Brahmani. Shabde Cha means that not only is he expert in revealed scriptures, many people they may read the scriptures thoroughly and they may speak very nicely. Not only can they speak, they can speak, they can sing, they can make you cry, they can make you laugh, they can bring all kinds of emotions. But it's just something which they've acquired by the material um, 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 qualities. They may be very, very expert professional um, speakers. But, Shabdecha, this means that Guru has realized the scriptures. That the scriptures, they manifest in his heart. Krishna say Toma, Krishna Bitepa, Toma Sakati Yate, Amito Kangla, Krishna Krishna Bodhi, Dai Kapa Pache Pache. That Krishna is within his heart. And all the revealed scriptures, all the knowledge is there within his heart. And when he speaks, then that Shabda Brahma, it manifests from his heart. And then it comes in the form of transcendental sound vibration. So one should approach with the heart. 
hearing, not with the ear, but the ear is the vehicle by which that sound vibration, which is transcendental sound, which is Krishna in the form of sound, enters into the ear and then enters into the um, courtyard of the heart. So Shabdecha, and then Parish Brahmani, that he has realized also Krishna. He's realized the scriptures and he has realized Krishna. Um, Brahma Samhita. <laughs> That his eyes anointed with the sound of love. I invite you now to talk to the Lord to me now. Salutas of Eva, to the Yeshu to know for your feet. Go in the magic of the show. That pray under now. His eyes anointed with the sound of love. Why? Because he has that intimate relationship. He has praying. So, such persons, then we should go and we should approach. That it is enjoying the scriptures, that we should be very careful, that we should approach somebody who is bona fide, who has his qualities, and nishnatam, uh, that, um, that in his heart there is no material desire, no material lust, no anger, no envy, no greed, no illusion, uh, no material madness due to being frustrated in this world, that such person is completely pure. His heart is completely pure. And Radha and Krishna are resting in the core of his heart. And because Radha and Krishna are there, also his heart is a holy down. Vrindavan is there, and also all his associates. It behooves that we should approach such personality. Because if we make the mistake, and we approach somebody who does not have proper qualities, then we can suffer greatly. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta says, Bhakti Thakur, he gives... Um, a story to illustrate this. He explains that one time, one blind person, he wanted to go to the house of the in-laws. So his um, family members, they took him and they put his hand on the tail of a bull. And they said, whatever you do, you just hold on to this tail and you don't let go. And then, boom, they hit the bull and the bull just started to run. And he was just thinking, just hold on. Because disciple, whatever you, you should hold on to the instructions of your guru. This is, this is qualification of disciple. That whatever your guru says, that you follow as it is, without addition, without subtraction, without even um, trying to understand it from so many material angles. You have faith. So he was holding on. This bull ran through so many rocks, glass, um, thorns, mm, and just ripped his body apart. His face uh, was bleeding. He was thinking only one thing. Just hold on. <laughs> Whatever, just hold on. And then he, he was dragged to the in-law's house and in such a state of, of, of utter, utter punishment, utter suffering, he just passed out. His in-laws, they came outside, they could not recognize him, and they looked. Ha! Thief! Stealing this bull! Get the sick! And they beat him, and beat him, and beat him. Huh? And he just suffered like anything. So the Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasvati Thakur, he gives this example that this is what happens when you take shelter of somebody who is not bona fide guru. Hmm? That guru, you take shelter of a... Of, that you, when you don't take shelter of a bona fide guru. And you see, Practically speaking, practically, this is not like just a story, it's practical. That somebody will go, and out of good heart, they'll think, oh, that yes, oh, Prabhu, uh, Dr. Bozo, you have to take initiation. Uh, and I said, well, Prabhu, who do I take initiation from? Well, da 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 da. And then they go, they take initiation. And then they are, you know, to the best of their ability, they're hearing, they're chanting, they're serving. Um, but the anarchists, which are within the heart, they're not going. Nothing's going. And then the person's thinking, why? What's happened to me? I'm a demon. There's something wrong with me. And practically speaking, you see people, they go mad in this situation. But it's just the fact that they're not properly connected with a bona fide guru. But they're just like that person who's holding on to the tail of bull and say, whatever happens, don't let go. And they're beat, beat, and beat, and beat, and beat by the material energy. So, what to do? Practical experience that, in very short, I'll explain. I um, came to Christian Conscious Movement in 1978. Then, 
also according to process, take himself a guru. But then, after some time, what happened? That in, in uh, Mahabharata, it says, that if guru uh, does not follow the path of Srila Bhakti, if they lose discrimination as to what is to be done, what is not to be done, if they make offense to Srila Vaishnavas, to Bhakti, Bhakta, Bhagavan, mm -hmm. then such guru, they should be rejected. So we see, that, practically speaking, most amazing things, they happen. Before I came to Krishna consciousness, I lived such a life, I thought I could not be amazed. But then when I came to Krishna consciousness, by something, I was completely amazed. Huh? What they did, they took LSD, you know what is LSD? Huh? Acid. And offered to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Offered to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Sacrament. So, what to do? Then you have to leave. But the most wonderful thing about it, that Maya is so wonderful, that even today, I believe, they still offer the huh? So then I thought, oh no, I think I made a wrong decision here. Let me, let me go another way. So then after some time, then my authority said, okay, back to Bozo, I think it's time for you to take initiation again. I said, okay. Well, who should I? I said, well, this is our representative here. I think this will be a good choice for you. Okay. <laughs> so then, again, second time, I took initiation. But I thought, ah, I've been through this before. This is just a formality. I don't really have faith here, but what to do? Huh? And what should not do this? If one is not, um, first of all, approaching uh, and developing some relationship, and not knowing, that one could make a very disastrous mistake. So, what happened? But the person was a very good speaker. He could charm you like anything. But I thought, no. Then after some time, somehow I thought, oh, maybe this person is okay. Then what is the proof when I think somebody's okay? My mother sent me some money, huh? And I gave him the donation. When I give anybody money, that means my heart is melting. Because I don't give <laughs> 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 I just, I just handed over the check, and the next week, he ran off with his secretary or something. <laughs> and then all around me, all the pastors were crying. I said, I know how you feel, it's okay. <laughs> so, scriptures are, I'll end very quickly. So, scriptures are saying, be very careful, be very, very careful, that one should approach a bona fide guru. Because this human life, that in this human form of life, that we should achieve our goal. That goal, goal is that we should uh, be very, very strong to achieve by Krishna praying. And how to do it? By taking shelter of bona fide guru. So then I thought, oh, now I don't need guru anymore. I've gone through this. I studied the scriptures, but I could understand right? that if you want to achieve your goal, that you have to take shelter of one of my guru. That even if somebody, they're following all the principles, uh, they're doing shravan, kirtan, vishnu, smarana, pada, sevam, atman, vada, dasam, sakyam, atman, nivedanam, but they don't have shelter of one of my guru, uh, that they cannot achieve the goal. Never they can achieve the goal. That best, in next life, they get Sukriti and then they can get Sadhusanga. But never achieve the goal. I thought it's okay. This is okay with me. If I can do this, I'm happy. But no more guru. Huh? Then, <laughs> then after, then I started to hear from many sadhus on the institution. And I was hearing from them, and they were speaking very, very nicely. I didn't know what they were getting was from Guru Dev, actually, at that time. I thought this is very nice. But I thought, you know, if I can read, if I can study, I can do like this also. This is not, I'm not so impressed. Then, by very, I was very, very fortunate. By mercy of Srila Prabhupada, and mercy of whatever little service I did, then I went to Sri Bhuvaneshwar, to Bhuvaneshwar. And then Bhuvaneshwar, then I heard from his divine grace, Nitya Lila, to Vishnu, and Vishnu Pad, Asta Thursa, to Shishma, Srila Prabhupada, and Nitya Samara. And when I heard, then I said, oh, this is Guru. Immediately, in my heart, this is Guru. But then I thought, but look, I cannot just surrender like this. That I need some time. I went to Lord Nityananda and I prayed. That I thought, Radha Krishna, that oh, that better, closer is Gornitai. 
And I'm forgiven for me, Lord Nityananda. Because Lord Nityananda is taking care of those who are maha patita, most fallen. So, oh Lord Nityananda, please, you help me. Huh? Please give me signs. Because, can we see Guru with this eye? With the material eye, we cannot see Guru. But rather, we pray to Krishna. We cry to Krishna. And first we cry to Gaur Nithai, and most especially to Lord Nityananda. Huh? That please, you, say, you reveal to me. Huh? You show me. You open my eyes somehow. Huh? You give me mercy that I can understand. Huh? Who, is, who is that? And by mercy of Lord Nityananda, then Lord Nityananda, then he, because he is a kind of Guru Tattva, he is in charge of this Guru Tattva, then he presents, he brings Guru. Not that we see Guru, but he brings Guru. And then Lord Nityananda, then he showed me that, oh, that you should take shelter here. I said, wait, wait, wait. I don't know. Please, give me another sign. <laughs> and in this way, Lord Nityananda, again and again and again. And then I just had to finally surrender. But what happened? That time, we would hear in Bhuvaneshwar and hear in Harikata, like we're hearing here, two hours, three hours, and our consciousness would be lifted up that we would be just like in the local government. Huh? And we're thinking how fortunate we are. How fortunate. We would travel all over the world with our guru. And so many people would present so many bogus arguments. And we were always happy because we knew he was going to smash all of them. And we were really sad. We had nothing to fear. Huh? We were on top of the world. And just like that, we left. We would just jump. I never used four letter words. That time when he left, only four letter words were coming from my mouth. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? What am I going to do? But Gurudev is taking care. No, Gurudev physically, uh, he had left and entered into Nitya But still, from that abode, he's still taking care. And what happened? Very soon after that, one, two weeks, then we went to Sri Navadipan. And there, there was right before Navadvip Parikrama. And Srila Gurudev was there with the sannyasis. And they were having their meeting before the Parikrama. And all sannyasis, they were sitting there. Srila Gurudev was there. Uh, I believe Srila um, um, Bhaktivedanta Bhavan Maharaj was there. And as soon as I just got darshan of Srila Gurudev from afar, then just that darshan, then I knew, oh, this is my guy. I was just here. He did not say any word, just like that. Then I knew, this is my guy. And even my godfathers, they were going, hey, Govinda, are you okay? Are you okay? And I was just, I just had to like keep everything calm. Why? I was so present. Uh, I had to uphold the thing of the institution. Like that. So, in this way, I was thinking, how, how I'm going to be with um, Srila Narayan Maharaj. This, Realization, it hit me so strong that it was the most biggest realization or impression, practically speaking, I had in my life. And I knew that if I turned away from it, that I would be making the biggest lie of my life. Huh? But I had my institutional consideration. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? Huh? So then, my regional secretary, he called me up one day. He said, Look, I said, You know, we should go and then Sir Gurudev made his first European tour, first to Amsterdam. And then my vice president, he's sitting over there. He Ragnar Bhattapugo. He jumped ship immediately and went with Shiva Gurudev. He said, You should come to my temple. My president is very open hearted. He will receive you. No problem. So, so then my GPC, he called me and said, Hey Kobe, you're not bringing Narayan Maharaj over? No, 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 never. What do you say? Then my regional secretary, I was talking to him, and then by that time, Gurudev was coming to England, and my whole temple were all rebels, we're all betrayed by Srila Prabhupada Maharaj. So what was that? That whatever, that for Sadhu Sangha, you break all barriers to go and hear from Sadhu. This was our prayer. <laughs> stupid idiot. I was thinking I'm a temple person. I can't go anywhere. <laughs> so then I became very, I had a fever. I was lying down there. Then my regional secretary called. And then he, he stopped talking and said, yeah, this Narayan Maharaj is coming. What are we going to do? Maybe we should
should go in here as members of the organization. He said, yes, you and I will be representatives, and we go. And immediately I said, oh, my game is over. Now I can go. So, the day before Gurudev was coming, my regional secretary called me. Huh? His name, no, sorry, Krishna Dharma. So he called me, and then he said, he said, I can't go. I said, why? My wife said that if you go, you may get caught by that Haran Haran. <laughs> that he'll catch you. So he said, but you, you go, and you be our representative. I said, I'm <laughs> Mercy of Guru, huh? and ultimately mercy of rendering service. Guru Dave, he said, what is the quality? Because I've taken so much time. What is the qualification of disciple? Oh. <laughs> Two minutes. Qualification of disciple. That. Guru, you have heard the quality 
and qualification of Pula Pai Gurudev. As you probably have heard, Tasma Gurum Papa Petro and some Tati Karatam Guru may have been in this Tusla. Now, if you can come in your mind, if someone is intellectual giant, very good speaker, and yes, very fast knowledge, is he qualified a Pula Pai Guru? Although he may act, he may wrong that I am Pula Pai Guru and people may give so much respect. Is he qualified Guru? Our scripture is telling the Sabda Brahmani Nishnaya, non Nishnaya Parejati, Samasta Sasama Hala, Ijadani Vibhara Chata. Just like if you want to milk and have a cow, but cow has no cow, unless until the cow has no cow, you could not get any milk. In the same way, if someone is intellectual giant and very good speaker, he knows Shastra very well, can speak very easily, can get told in a minute, he, he can make you laugh and make you cry. But if he has no realization, he is not be a Banafai Guru. So don't be cheated by these qualities that if you have no qualification of, if you have realized so, then you are not a Banafai Guru. So must be realized so. This is his primary symptom. And other symptom, that departs from this material world and very learned scholar in all scriptures, this is secondary symptom. The primary symptom very hard to understand. I will mention in scripture that Guru will test the disciple one year and disciple will test Guru one year, vice versa. What a fact, Guru, ever seen anybody, he can understand is qualified or not. But disciple or devotee, what is about one year? Even so many lifetime, he could not understand, could not judge, is one of a guru or not. So we have to be always good association. If you be in good association, by the cosmic mercy of Krishna boss, they will tell you is one of a guru or not. By their association, you can understand. Now question may arise that guru is rejectable or not. In the mention in scripture, Guru specially Dikshal never be rejected. But there is one condition. Vaishnava with the seeker. If he is a reverse word, Guru Nanak had Vaishnava, then I will reject him immediately. No consideration. Bye bye. No <laughs> So, Vaishnava with the seeker means, it mentioned in scripture, Hamti, Nindanti, Vaidyasti, Vaishnava Nabi Nandati, Krutdhati, Yati Naharsa, Hanti, if someone is killing Vaishnav and without any cause, he is criticizing any bona fide Vaishnav. Hanti, in the quiet destiny, he becomes very interesting Vaishnav. And if you know if Vaishnav is coming, bona fide Vaishnav, you have to welcome him. If not, then also Vaishnav of Adar. Quiet destiny, Vaishnav and Nandati, Kruddhate, if say any bona fide Vaishnav, you are become very angry, although you are acting as a guru, but if one of your must have come, you must not be angry. <laughs> but you become very angry. And that you know how so. Seeing Vaishnava, you have to realize he is my like soulmate. We can discuss Ishtadosti, religious seminar, but if you not do so, then what does the need? This is the six causes to go fall down. So nowadays, so many going falling. So many have fallen down. Why? That this is a sixth cause, any one cause is there. So you have to be careful. If any, one of, any guru is acting like this, then what to do? Then immediately have to reject him. Then how will advance in Krishna consciousness? Then it mentioned that Punascha Vidhina Sammat Grahe Vaishnava Guru. Immediately after that, according to our scripture, the Vedic scripture, you have to find one Pranapaya Guru there, have to take shelter in his lotus feet and to advance in Krishna consciousness. Before in, in this uh, slope, that's Tasma Tharva Kajatrina Guru Nadi Chita Bhave. We have to teach your all effort how to be initiated by a Pranapaya Guru there. He may neglect you know, or not have the time, this and that. Like Sri Bhakti Siddhanta Sarsat Thakur Prabhupada. 
want to institute a by the court to Satya Sumaji Maharaj. He told, oh, I have lost Gauri time in the Gauri time. He can ask me after one week. After one week, Prabhupada Sumaji Sarasthi Thakur told, oh Prabhu, have you asked Gauri time? Oh, I am sorry, I forget. I lost later on. <laughs> By this way, it's only passing a time. Then Prabhupada said, oh, somehow or other I have to do something that is hard bound to men. Then Prabhupada started Chandrayan Rata and Gokras Bhajan. Chandrayan Rata and Gokras Bhajan means Chandrayan Rata Jai is like moon from new moon to full moon. Every day moon is increasing, increasing, increasing and from full moon to new moon increasing, increasing, increasing. So Prabhupada first day will take one byte and second byte, three byte like this up to full moon, sixteen byte. Again, 15, 14, 13, and for new moon, nothing, but not by hand. Keeping process on the floor, like cow eating, it is like this. Sing this, and Shiva Bhakti Vinod Thakur told to go to Satasvari Mahadar. Do you want to kill this bird? Sing this is determination. Go to Satasvari heart, bound to melt, and he accepts yes, this disciple. So, Tasmat Sarva Pajatina, you have so much effort. So, put the heart bound to men to accept you. Another example, Sri Narottam Thakur, initiated by Lokanath Goswami, he refused so many times, then he thought, oh, I have rendered some menial service that his heart bound to men. You know, in ancient time in India, there is no like Western toy or international bathroom there. So, Lokanath Goswami used to go for passing early in the morning, so, Narottam Thakur, Every day is to clean the way, how to have to go, and for cleaning hand after passing, he makes some soil with some dust and take the sands and tables out from there and take the stool and throw far away out of the camp. One day Lord Prasad thought, who is doing all this thing? At first he could not realize because he was always absorbed in Krishna Bhajan. When he understood, oh, who wanted to catch me? So one day he found Lord Prasad to do this and then he goes to his mercy. So somehow that you have to, any kind of service and render, then good heart should be melt. If good heart follow, he hurt my feelings, he should not think like this. He is wasting his mercy for our benefit, not his benefit. So you have to understand this thing very clearly. And what do they have told, have to listen carefully and have to follow without any judge, but not like what Asama is told like the whole day full, just hold on, not like this. Mention Guru Dali is a Chari Charani. The order of Guru has to follow without any consideration. So now in Kalinika, Kanima Mai, Haina Param Guru Dev, so Bhakti Pakan, Kesar Pasai Maharaj, was in Prabhupada in Brahmachari stage. One day, one letter came from his mother that, Oh, you know, I will get bed, please come and visit me this last time. Prabhupada told to our Paramuru Dev, Vinod, your mother is in that bed, go and visit her. So, Paramuru Dev, two days not going to do pranam to pay his obeisance to Prabhupada. Only sitting in one room and chanting. One day, Prabhupada asked his personal assistant, his servant, Paramananda Prabhu, I am not seeing Vinod for two days. Has he gone to see, visit his mother? But no Prabhupada. He is not, he has not gone. But where is he? He is sitting in a room and chanting only. Then Prabhupada ordered him to call. Then our Paramahana Dev came and told Vinod, he has not gone to visit your mother. But then they keep his face down, no Prabhupada. Why not? I order him to go, oh Prabhupada. A life after life, so many lifetimes, I have mother and father. By the cosmic mercy of Krishna and Mahaprabhu, I receive you. If I go there, if my mother told, this is my last order, I am passing from this world, my other children are not qualified to take care of the land. He is they are learning, he is son of the landlord. So you have to take care of the marry. So what shall I do? I will fulfill my mother's last desire, or I shall give up even go there. So I think this, so I got went there. 